Thanks to the panel. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, everybody. It's time now for the first of a series of presentations we're going to have. We call them spotlights. These are relatively brief presentations throughout the forum uh, that focus on passionate innovators from across this continent. These are people who exemplify courage, imagination, creativity. These are people who are making contributions that are life-changing and history-making. Now that sounds like a lot, but it's really true. To start us off, Lee Berger is a paleoanthropologist at Witts University, and he, along with his nine-year-old son, Matthew, found a fossil of a new hominid species that is nearly two million years old. You may have noticed that it is right outside in the hallway, and you probably passed it on your way into this room. You should understand, I asked him, I thought this must be a replica or something. They would never allow the real skeleton to come here. No, it's the real thing. Most people in the world will never have a chance to see this, but we do, and we're very fortunate. We're very fortunate also to have with us Professor Lee Berger. Thank you very much. It uh, certainly is my privilege to welcome all of you to the continent of the origin of our species. What most of you don't realize sitting here at the southern tip of Africa is that this is the birthplace of humankind. Every single critical event in the origin and evolution of our species has occurred on this continent. And as we look at this magnificent continent, which represents one third of the habitable landmass of this planet, that means statistically you can fit North America, South America, and Europe inside of this continent. Its unique position on the world situates it so it's the only continent with significant amounts of land traveling east and west along the equator, as well as north and south. And this breeds an enormous amount of ecological diversity, which of course breeds plant diversity. So I can throw out wonderful statistics like within 20 kilometers of where you are sitting right now are more plant species than in all of North America. And that diversity in plant species, of course, breeds diversity in mammal species. The remarkable land mammal species and large mammal species of Africa that illustrates the stresses and stressors that have made this continent our birthplace. And I'm going to put you today in this very brief introduction that indeed every critical event, every single thing that makes us so important and unique has come out of this continent over the last five million years. And in fact, that will be a reflection into the future. Our story began five million odd years ago as tropical Africa began to give way to a subtropical and broken woodland Africa. And that's where the first of these truly remarkable critical events occurred, bipedalism, walking on two legs, something that fundamentally set us apart as an experiment from not only every other ape, but effectively every other mammal that's lived in the history of this planet, followed almost immediately by the experiment in cooperation, the lowering of intraspecific violence that's a hallmark of our species despite our application of technology against each other. We are the most peaceful mammal on planet Earth. We see that in the physical manifestation of the reduction in canine size and, of course, the reduction in sexual dimorphism. Our males are feminized primates. They're close in body size to females. As we go through the critical events, we see the advent of stone tool technology at around two and a half million years on this continent. One of the most critical events of physics and mathematics, where we, as a species, as a lineage, first explored the concept of looking at an object, having a problem, seeing how that object, once transformed, could solve that problem. 
The complexity of stone tools is something that's a fundamental hallmark of our species and a gift of this continent. Our very body emerged about 1.7 million years ago. The human-like stature, the barrel-shaped chest, most importantly, a pelvis that allowed a bipedalism of striding and walking long distances, making us this incredible, efficient, striding bipedal ape, accompanied by long legs and shortened arms, and of course, the beginnings of an increase in brain size. In the early periods, 1.6, 1.7 million years ago on this continent, we see the first encephalization experiments, a reorganization of the brain outside of all other apes and all other mammals, allowing us to begin to cognitively interact with the world and possibly begin to vocalize intense, a past, a present, and a future. We see at about one and a half million years ago, the first evidence only 1,500 kilometers to the north of here, the first capturing of fire, the first controlled use of energy. When combined with that complex stone tool technology, we have a situation where things like a space shuttle are just 1.5 million years away, but all the makings are there. We see in the continent of Africa as we move down below a million years, things like the invention of the spear. So that now instead of throwing a rock at somebody or having to tackle something you wanted, you could reach out and touch somebody from a distance. We see also at about a half a million years the origin of the first shelters. The first time in history that human beings began to live in an organized structure built on the ground. So the very civilizations and city-states and houses we live in have their origins in these primitive crude structures. At the same time, a half a million years ago, we see the origin of the late night rave for teenagers. Not only the control of fire, but the manufacture of it, a fundamental physics leap like none other, where suddenly night could be made day, cold could be made hot, food could be pre-digested by cooking it, and of course one of those late night teenagers could walk out the front of one of those caves and throw an ember onto the grass and watch it destroy millions of hectares and think how cool that was as human beings began to alter the very face and environment of this planet. And then 200,000 years ago, we see the gift possibly from the very beaches that surround us right now, the origins of our own DNA. Mitochondrial Eve may have very well walked where we sit today. And from that, from a single woman, every single human being on this planet shares a common identity. From 130,000 to 100,000 years, we see the origin of the infinite toolkit, where suddenly anything around us could be used to solve any problem. And this was almost certainly the origins of human language, that fundamental thing that separates us from all other animals followed by the origin of the first artwork, the first burial of the dead. There, by the grace of God, go I, all a gift of Africa. So that by 80,000 years, everything that makes us us was already founded in the people living in Africa. It would be them that carried that out beyond these borders to populate first the old world, then the new world. By 12 and a half thousand years ago, in northern Africa in the Fertile Crescent, the domestication of plants and animals. 7,000 years ago in the same re region, the origin of civilizations themselves, roads, and the fermentation of alcoholic beverages. All 
created as part of Africa. 300 years ago, the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution, and now I hope you begin to see how that is just yesterday in the scope of all of this that comes from the African continent. And some 40 years ago, a little African ape, or a group of them, put together all those complex stone tools and that African energy invented on this continent of our birth. And they launched a rocket up to take this into space where one of them could take a picture of that. One third of the habitable landmass of planet Earth. Approximately one seventh of the population of planet Earth. And the reason I put this slide up to this particular group as part of a human origins talk is to remind you that history repeats itself. That is Earth from space at night. And those lights reflect population densities almost perfectly. They are not power outages. When you look at the continent of Africa, there in the center, you will see that a large percentage of that population is situated north of the Sahara. The other five to six hundred million people scattered around sub-Saharan Africa in pockets, yet with the extraordinary resources of this giant continent. Eighty plus percent of the accessible minerals, the oils off the west coast. If you want to predict the future from the past, remember that we originate from here, that every critical event in our history comes from here, and that the potential of the future, where people aren't and resources lie, is actually in that very same continent. Just over three months ago, my colleagues and I announced a new species of early human ancestor, Australopithecus sediva, announced on the cover of the journal Science, which for us is kind of like getting on Rolling Stone. It was indeed found by my nine-year-old son, an extraordinary thing where he found the first piece of the holotype skeleton, which is sitting outside today, and it is quite right that you will be some of the only and first people to have that sort of contact with what are the rarest, most sought after objects on planet Earth. Only a few thousand fragments have ever been found. What is sitting out in front of the doors here is one of only seven partial skeletons, and it is the most complete ever discovered in history. A young child, 10 to 13 years of age, that died 1.95 million years ago. The face that you're about to see emerging with synchrotron scan is one of our ancestors, our link with the past. There is no finer or more complete skull of our ancestry, no better proof than the real thing, than what you're seeing, the face you're seeing, emerge on the screen right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I have had the terrific privilege of welcoming you to the continent of our origins. It is now my privilege to simply welcome you home. Have a wonderful conference. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. It's just overwhelming. It is incredible and inspiring, and you've made all of us feel so much more intelligent in only 15 minutes. It's just incredible. Thank you very much.